Hey, poker people, this is Sky with smartpokerstudy.com, and I'm coming at you today with a video all about basic usage of sit and go in game tools. Now, this is a program that I use every single day while I'm doing hand history reviews on my prior night's sit and go games. And it's a great program for examining ICM spots for sit and goes. And ICM stands for independent chip model, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, and before I forget, if you're watching this video in YouTube, please click subscribe and like this video below. Help me grow, people! SNG EGT is a free program and can be downloaded at this address. At this address, type it into your browser, uh, download the file, save it to the desktop, open it up, open binaries, and then open sngegt.exe. It calculates ICM spots for up to nine players at a table. ICM is a mathematical approach to showing you the statistically correct points at which you can go all in with any two cards based on the value of each chip and your equity. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying ICM tells you what hands you can profitably shove with or call a shove with depending on the chip stacks of you and your opponents. SNG EGT not only takes into account the chip stacks of the players at the tables, but also the payout structure of the tourney. So let's get into a little example. Um, a 6 max SNG, we're on the bubble with 3 players. I've got 13 BBs versus a 33 BB and a 44 BB stack. So I'm the short stack here by quite a large margin. I've got Ace 8 suited. Now I want you to ask yourself, in a push fold situation, do you push with this hand? We'll do an examination in just a sec. Um, but before we get to that, ICM of course calculates push fold um, you know, equities. But the thing is, ICM does not take into account the profitability of future bets or making different types of bets. Maybe Ace-8 suited is a great hand to open limp and play post-flop with. Maybe it's a good hand and a good situation to do a min open with. You know, who knows? That's all dependent on the situation, the players, your playing style, how the game flow has been going up to that point and everything. ICM just tells you whether or not a shove is profitable. So take it with a grain of salt. It, that doesn't mean that every time I base a suited with 13 big blinds, if it's profitable while we do these calculations, that doesn't mean every time I have to do it. Maybe there's a better way to play this hand based on the opponents, you know, something to keep into account or to take into account. So... When you first open up SNG EGT, you're going to have to change some settings here. We got to work out our blind structures and our payout structures. Um, I just put everything on full tilt, even though I'm a carbon player, you know. But small blind, big blind, and the antes. You can see carbon starts off with 10% antes from the get go. Uh, nine max payouts, six max payouts right there. So enter all that information in, then you're ready to get started. We are in a six max tourney here. We have three players currently. I keep the hand at ace-ace, and I'll show you why in just a little bit, um, but just keep it there for now. 50 and 100. So you could do push or calling situations. And in this instance, we're pushing because, uh, you know, we're on the button first stack, short stack. So the first thing you want to do is select some stack sizes. The big blind has 4303, SB, 3269, US, 20, or 12, 48. The short stack big time there. So you can see, of course, Ace Ace has a 3.1% equity um, or expected value at this time with this calling range. But let's say we've got Ace Ace suited. Now this guy in the small blind, 33 BBs, he has he has to worry about one guy with a bigger stack still to act after him. What is this guy's calling range? Um, I don't think he'd really call with fives, fours, sixes. I don't ah, maybe call with sixes. You know, I like eights. I like eights as a calling range because if he would call and double us up, I mean, he would be at the bottom of the chip stacks. It would be a huge, a huge hit to his equity within the tournament tier. So I'm going to put him on a tighter range. Let's put him on 7%. Now, if this guy folds, the big blind is probably going to call with quite a bit wider of a range here. Let's say um, he's a very passive player. He's a 32-6 right there. So... Um, he calls with a ton of hands. Whoa, not 26%. Let's not go that crazy. Um, let's give him ace five off. Ace do suited and some... Yeah, I like that right there. Ace five... Uh, where'd it go? Ace five off, ace do suited. Yeah, and threes are better. Okay, so let's say he is calling with a 19% range here. Well, ace, ace ace, of course, is a great hand to shove. Anybody... And I wouldn't shove here, actually. I would play it for a raise and hope they, hope they come along, of course. But Ace-Ace suited. Now, remember what your answer was. Would you shove or not? And ICM says 
go ahead and shove. It's a 0.7% expected value, which means that um, the expected value of a push is greater than the expected value of a fold, of course. You're going to win more times uh, than you would uh, if you would just fold. I'm sorry, your, your stack would be bigger after shoving than it would for just folding is basically what this means right here. So uh, that's great to know. Ace-8 suited, awesome. That is a shoving hand. But what about, you know, Ace-7 suited? What about a six suited well instead of going one hand at a time there's a much better way they have compute all now this right here is the expected value of your shove i always err on the side of side of nittiness i go for a 0.1 percent expected value zero is a break-even hand or break-even range i guess i should say so let's find all of the hands here that we can shove with profitably um, at a 0.1 percent ev and that's ace deuce suited and ace three off you know ace deuce is so close we just say all aces in this instance What's the break even? Okay, break even is ace deuce. So, you know, we could just say in this instance we can shove any ace. Deuces are better. King seven, queen eight, jack eight, nine seven, eight seven, and the offsuit broadways. So those are all of the cutoff points in this situation. Now, these are the kinds of things that I have a notebook where I keep these hands at 13 BBs versus two kind of overwhelming chip stacks. These are my cutoffs. Ace deuce suited, king seven, queen eight, jack eight, nine seven, eight seven deuces, offsuit broadways, and then, you know, I would add ace deuces. As long as I have a hand better than these, um, I know that a shove is profitable, you know, in this instance right here. And I'll take note of this because as you're playing, you're going to come across these situations so many more times. Uh, you can just whip open that notebook as long as you're online, you know, not, <clears throat> of course, not within a what do you call it? Not within, you know, on, at a live setting, but online, you could whip open the notebook to help you out to figure out, hey, when I should push and when I should fold, you know? So that's one instance. You can also do a calling instance. So let's say we are uh, on the big blind. We are this guy right here. We've got this tiny short stack dude shoving into us. Let's set his shoving range. Now he's been only raising 6%. He's playing super darn nitty. Um, so let's give him something like uh, threes are better, ace deuce, ace seven off. Yeah, let's give him that range right there. So a 17% range. His his goal right now is to chip up, and he needs to make a dent uh, in order to, to, you know, cash in this tourney right here. Uh, such passive guys, he probably can't wait for us to lose, you know, to get knocked out. He's got to make moves himself to chip up. So what can we call within the BB? We're an overwhelming favorite. Well, let's compute. Let's err on the side of nittiness. And it looks like we can only call fives are better, ace 10 suited, and ace 10 off. So you could see how nitty you need to call in certain circumstances or in a circumstance like this right here. But one of the great things is we all know big blind players who, with this chip stack, would call every ace, would call all the pairs, would call, you know, even the offsuit aces and a ton of Broadway cards they would call, <clears throat> which is great. If you've got these kinds of players in your game, that's awesome. You just need to be aware that if they're going to call so wide, maybe we can't shove so wide. Um, just because, you know, if their calling range is even wider, it, may, it might it might make a difference in, in the games, you know. But in order to calculate that, hey, we could just always go back to the pushing situation. We're on the button. We could change his serving, you know, range to be even wider. And then, hey, what can we shove with? Wow, it's even more profitable there. So, you know, there are all the kinds of things that you can mess with. In this instance, one of the things I like to do, too, is say, hey, what if we had a better, slightly better chip stack here? Give us a 1,000. Take away a 1,000 here. Now that's going to change things immensely. Let's put him back to the 17% range there. So ace eight suited is definitely a fold in this instance. And actually, I wouldn't say it's a fold. It's just not a push. You don't want to push this with, with this hand. Increasing it by 1,000 chips would give us 10 more BBs. So we'd be at 23 BBs. And the stacks would be all pretty darn close right there. Well, it would be kind of asinine to shove with ace eight suited. It's even a bad idea to shove with aces, kings, and queens. And, you know, you want to get value out of your good hands. So when your chip stack gets so big, it's no longer a push-fold situation. But that's just one thing to just kind of, kind of look at here. What if these stacks were here, but the blinds were doubled? Uh oh, it was later in the tourney. Now, Ace Eight suited is once again a push, without a doubt. Now that we're only down to you know 11 BBs in this instance, so that's one of the things that you can do to kind of change the situation, change what's going on, uh, uh, to give you more insight into any given hand. Um, you know, some of the changes that you can make right there. Yep. So, uh, you know, I think that ends this video on basic SNG 
uh, EGT use. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below, and I may just make another video just for you. If you found any value at all in this video, please like it below and subscribe to my channel. And even better yet, uh, share it with a friend. Word of mouth is the number one way that you can help me build this uh channel. Please visit me at smartpokerstudy.com, tweet me at smartpokerstudy, or send me an email to sky at smartpokerstudy.com. And until next time, study smart, play hard, and make your next session the best one yet.